The tools that I will be covering is the pick tool, the line tool, the shape tools, the text tool, and the shaping tool. First, let's go through the pick tool. The pick tool is the one that you'll be using probably the most. And the pick tool has an option on it. And if you click and hold, there's a pick, freehand prick, or free transform. We will usually be using the pick tool. The pick tool allows you to select different objects on the screen. Next, we're going to talk about the line tool. The line tool has multiple drawing options available. If you click on the down arrow, you can see the variety of tools available. We will be talking about two different tools, the two-point line and the pen tool. First, let's talk about the two-point line. We'll select two-point line. We are going to create two points, and there's going to be a line between it. If we want to draw a line, click and hold and drag where we want the, the line to end, we'll release. That is our line. We can continue to go, and as you can see as I hover over this, we get the crosshair, and it says it's on the node, so I can start from the end, click and hold, and release, and we have another line. That is the two-point line. The second tool we'll talk about is the pen tool. Come over, click on the pen tool. The pen allows us to make more curved lines, and we're really working with nodes and splines. We can click, and when we drag, we're not dragging our line, but we're actually dragging the direction in which that line is going to come off that node. And the length of this arrow is the intensity of the line going in that direction. So for example, if I start off here, drag out my arrow, release it, now I get a curve. Now you can see that curve is tangent to that node. Now wherever I want to put my second point, I can click, and now I'm going to not release it, but drag it, and I can adjust the tangency of the line to that node, and the intensity of it, how little or how great of curve we want. And again, now this won't just end at our two points, but it'll keep going. And we can put more lines down here and around. Now, to exit this tool, you can hit the escape key, and it's completed your, your shape. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is at the top, or in the property bar, there's a, a couple different sections I'd like to talk about. There are nine dots with a black dot in the middle. This is our origin of our shape. Right next to those nine dots are an X and a Y, which show the coordinates of that origin. To the right, there is a horizontal and vertical dimension shown, the overall width and the overall height of our object. We can change the width and the height by just highlighting in the box and typing in a new height. and it modifies our shape. We can also change it by percentage. So if we wanted to make this object twice as big, we can type in our scale factor. Next to that is a lock. You can see the lock is unlocked at this point. We can also click it to lock the ratio. That is going to maintain the height and width ratio. So as I change this box, as I change this, if I make this 200%, it will not only change the width, but it also changes the height because we've locked it. Next to that is our, our rotation. We can rotate this part. If we want to rotate it 90 degrees, 90. And we can type in the angle precisely. The next, we can mirror the part. So mirror horizontally. We can also mirror vertically. The little pen is the outline. That is, that is the actual line. In this case, it has 0.5 points. That's the width of that line. We can go to the drop down and select a different width. Or we can just type it in in the box. By default, it will accept it as a point. Next to that are the end conditions and the line condition. The end conditions allows us to put arrowheads on if we would like, the start, the end, or we can remove that. 
The line itself, we can see the line style. Do we want it solid or dashed? Those can all be set here. Those are the two main line tools that we'll discuss. Next, we'll talk about shapes. There are three shape tools listed in our toolbar. The first one has rectangle. The next one has the ellipse. The last one has a variety of shapes. To use a shape tool, we'll just click on it. So in this case, let's go to the rectangle. The rectangle, we click and drag our rectangle and release to create it. Again, if we look up in the properties bar, we have many of the same options. We have our origin location. We have the coordinates of our origin, our X and Y. We have our width and our height. We have our lock. We have the rotation, the mirror horizontally and mirror vertically. Those are all the same as our line tool. Now the next couple parts are a little bit different. The next three options give us our corner conditions. Do we want to make the corners rounded? Do we want to make them scalloped or do we want to just chamfer the edges? So in this case, we have rounded corners, but our corners don't look rounded. We control the roundness of each corner by the dimensions in this box here. We can click on the up arrow and we can start rounding those corners. Now, in this case, you can see that all of the corners are changing the same. And the reason that they're all changing the same is that we have the lock on in the middle here. But if we don't want to change them all the same, let's say I want the upper left to be different, I can unlock those and I can go up and just modify one corner at a time. The second option is a scallop corner. We can click on scallop and it's going to change the scallop or we can change that to a chamfer. Next, we have our outline or our pen. With our object selected, we can change that width if we want to right here. Now, let's say we want to make an, a circle. We'll click on the ellipse tool. Now you can see we can click and drag the ellipse. We can make it wide, tall. But what if we want to make it an exact circle? What we do is we hold down the control key. The control key will lock our horizontal and vertical dimension together and make it an exact circle. And then we can drag that around. One of the other options that you should know is that if you click and drag and start to create a circle and you hit the, the shift key, where you clicked is going to be the center of that ellipse. So let's say I want to make it the center of the ellipse at a certain point. I can click on that point and start there as opposed to the upper left corner or upper right corner. We can also combine this up with the control key so we can make it a circle, controlling it about the center. I'm going to use my pick tool to actually select both of these circles to delete them. I'm going to click on the pick tool. I will then drag a box completely around both circles and press delete and delete both of those off. The last one I'll talk about is the third shape tool or the polygon tool. There are a variety of different shapes in here that you can use. I'm going to select on the star tool. Again, click and drag on the star. You're going from corner to corner. If you do press shift, it'll go to the center. If you do press control, it will then make the horizontal and vertical dimension the same. So you can create a nice star. Again, most of the options are the same as our line tool and our other shape tools. In this case, for the different tools here, this star, we have a five point star. We can make it a six point. We can make more. We can also change how pointy each of the points are. Again, we can use the up and down arrows or we can type in a value if we would like. So those are our shape tools. Next, I'd like to talk about our text tool. The text tool has a down arrow. And if you click and hold on it, you can make text or a table. In this case, we're going to talk about the text tool. So text. You can see that we get a crosshair and we get a letter A that indicates that we're going to be adding a text at some location. One thing I'd like to note here is that the default font and font size will show up in our properties toolbar. And in this case, we can go up there and change it prior to adding our text or a lot of times we can just add our text and change it later. In this case, I'm just going to add some text and change the font later. 
So I'm going to click down and I'm going to type in text tool. So now I can go back and change that font and I can click and highlight it. Now I need to highlight the text that I'd like to change. So I can go up here and change the font. I can also change the font size. The nice thing with the pick tool, if we have the pick tool selected, as long as we hover over it and we get uh, a crosshair, that is going to be our move tool. So we can move it around. So now if I want to change my text, again, if I click on my text, my picker tool, I can double click on it. I'll get my flashing line. Now I can go in there and either highlight or if I want to add more. You can also hit enter and go down into a new line. Let's say you're done with your text. You can just click on the pick tool and then click on your screen. That will deselect everything on the screen. Next, I want to talk about the shape tool. Sometimes we'll have lines that are drawn on the screen and we want to modify them. Typical way that we would do this is to select our pick tool, select our object, and then we will try to modify it. In this case, if I grab a node and I move it, all it's going to do is move the node. But if I want to actually change the shape of this object, I need to use a different tool, and that would be our shape tool. There are multiple tools under the shape tool button. We're just going to discuss the shape tool. When you click on the shape tool, what you'll notice is that your object will have nodes that appear. Here we can see our nodes that are controlling the shape of our object. If we want to modify this object, we can click on one of those nodes. You'll see the control handles come up for multiple nodes. We can hover over the control arm, and if we have the crosshair, that means we can move it. So now I can modify the shape as I'd like here. Let's uh, move this. I'd like to go over a few different options in the property bar. Most of them we're not going to be concerned about, but there are a couple that you should know about. First is if, if we select on a node, we get a variety of options that come up in the property bar. The first two I'd like to talk about are the convert to line and convert to curve. Since the object we've selected is already curved, that option is grayed out. We only have a convert the line. So if we don't want this to be a curve anymore, we could actually just click on convert the line and it would convert it back so we don't have the control arms on it. And sometimes we'll have a straight line that will want to convert to a curve. We can click on that button. So we can convert from a line to a curve or a curve to a line. Next, once we are in a curve, we have a couple different types of nodes that we can deal with. There are three types of nodes. First is a cusp node. Next is a smooth node. And the last one is a symmetrical node. Now in this case, the node that I've selected is a symmetrical node. So that is grayed out already. But, so what does that mean? A symmetrical node has two control arms that are the same length. And as I change one, the other changes automatically. We can also have a smooth node. Now the smooth node looks identical to the symmetrical node. Once we start to modify it, we'll see the difference. So in this case, I've changed this node to a smooth node. And now if I grab on one of the arms, only that arm changes. So I can change both sides independently of each other. Now the last type of node, the cusp node, what that means is that those two control arms are no longer in line with each other. In this case, they still look in line, but I can grab it and actually make a corner or a point to it. You can change the type of node to any one of those three.